Hey folks, I'm Lucy from Ballyhoo Creations. In today's video, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to digitize this little bitty plushie here from start to finish using the new Design Doodler software. This is a new software that came out a couple of months ago that John Deere is selling. And I reached out and asked for a copy for review and they were nice enough to give me some of the software to play around with so I could see how it works for in the hoop. Um, projects because it all of their examples weren't really in the hoop projects and I wondered like is it gonna work and so I'm gonna make this and show you it actually does work and it's pretty easy so I'm gonna show you the software let's jump in this is what design doodler looks like on my desktop now hopefully you can see my mouse clicking around here so you can see what buttons that I'm gonna be clicking and it's a very simple interface you've got menu items on the left you've got menu items over here on the right side and then you've got some more down at the bottom and then you have this little widget, blue widget tool that you'll be going back and forth to. So it's pretty intuitive once you start getting into it. They have about an hour long video that shows you what all of these are for. And once you have looked at that, things will make more sense. I'm going to start with a new file. And here we go. I'm going to grab the hand tool just to get this in the center. And I'm going to zoom in. And this is going to be a 4x4 four four hoop. But just to make sure, if you go down to the bottom right side with the little dots, the three little dots, and click on settings, and then up at the top instead of general, I want to look at hoops. And these are the different hoop sizes that you can design for. And there's my um, PES 100 by 100 millimeters, which is the four inch by four inch hoop, because I'm going to be stitching this on my baby lock, which uses PES. So right there close that and this is my four inch by four inch hoop in this circle right here now what i want to make is a little round plushie with a face on it and so i'm going to start off with my um, running stitch which when you click on this little widget it opens up and it's got different like calligraphy satin stitches it's got a fill stitch an applique it's got a bean stitch or a running bean stitch and then I just want a regular running stitch and I'm gonna um, instead of freehand that's the little freehand symbol and you'll learn these symbols pretty quickly I'm gonna click on the circle and then for the length let's see two and a half I'm gonna go with two millimeters and you can set this later on I'll show you how and now I'm ready to just draw a circle and I don't even have to get it centered or anything because I can go back and change things. So I'm going to click on my circle. It's highlighted now. You see those turquoise dots all around. I'm going to turn on over here on the right side my sequence view. And I like to put it over on the left as well as my settings properties. And so you can see I told it to have a two millimeter stitch length. And that is for running stitch for something where we're making seams. I like to use two millimeters. If I'm sewing something really small, I might go lower than that. And then for basting stitches, I make it higher. And you'll see that in just a second. I also want to, let's see, it's got the tie-ons and tie-offs here. We're not going to change that. And down here, this is the size of the circle and I've got a hundred millimeters for my hoop and I actually want to back that down a little less like that okay and just kind of move this into the center close enough now I also need this is my seam of two millimeter stitch length I want a placement stitch so I'm going to copy over here on the right copy and then paste actually I'm going to paste couple of them so I've got three identical circles right now one two three you, they all look the same here because they're stacked on top of each other for the first one I'm gonna actually change my color so over here on the right you've got these things that look like the little paint samples here I'm gonna make let's do gray it's a nice uh, in the hoop color scheme here this will be my placement stitch and then this will be my um, tack down and then I'll do a seam here so I've got three different colors so even if they're right together the machine is going to stop in between and that's what we need for in the hoop and what I want for my placement I'm going to get rid of this color palette on the placement I like a nice wide basting stitch of uh, four millimeters is good and just a single run that's great for the tack down, 
I'm gonna make it, I like three and a half. That's my personal preference. And again, a single run stitch is fine for that. But for the seam, again, I already had the two millimeters set, but I'm gonna actually do a double run for the seam. That's gonna double stitch the seam and make sure that it's very strong. I'm also going to make this a little bit smaller or make these two bigger. And the reason for that, when you stitch any kind of plushy, that tack down and then the embroidery kind of pulls it in. And then when you stitch your seam around it, your basting stitches may show. And so I like to have my basting stitches a little bit bigger than the seam. That way they don't get caught up. It's just a little um, best practice that I prefer to use. You can do it your own way. And I think what I want to do is actually make these bigger, the um, tack down. Um, let's see, the placement and tack down. I'm going to make those both 97. And it changed that. Okay. I don't want to maintain the ratio. That's close enough. And then same thing on this one. Let's just go 97 with that. And I'm just typing this in on my computer keyboard. So now you see I have a placement and a tack down. And then my seam is the smaller of the three circles. So that is going to create an in the hoop circle for a plushie. And you may notice I don't have any openings so that I can um, turn it right side out and stuff it. I'm actually going to put a slit that I'm going to cut in the back of it because when you have a curve like on this circle, it's really hard to hand stitch or glue that in this curved shape. It'll always kind of wind up flat. And so instead of doing that, I'm just going to have a slit in the back of mine and it will disappear into the fur. You'll never see it. Now let's make a face. So I'm going to go to a fill stitch down here on the widget, choose fill. I'm going to keep my circle shape. And for the density, I want a density of 0.4. And just create a circle about like that. And if I go to my colors, this is going to be the whites of the eye. And I do have to select it. Select that circle and say white. And now you see it's got a new color over here in the sequence view that is the white eye. I'm going to work on one eye and then I'm going to copy it to create the second eye. Now, I also need to put a pupil in there, but I don't like to stitch the pupil on top of the existing stitches. I'd prefer to have a hole. And this is one of the things that the Design Doodler software is not full-blown digitizing software. Normally you would have things like pull compensation and, and things where you could adjust. Um, this is a little more basic. It's much easier to use, but it's not as professional. And I'll show you a workaround of how to remove some stitches so that we can put the black pupil of the eye in there. I'm going to select that white eye and down here at the bottom you see where it has add a hole. I'm going to click on that, add a hole, and I'm going to actually zoom in to make this easier on me. And I'm just going to do kind of a circular sort of shape, or it's like a hexagon there. So that's good. Click on the hole down at the bottom again, and you see it actually puts a hole in the eye whites. Perfect. Now let's go and do this again with, again, I want to fill, I want to circle and the density is fine, but now I want black, and I'm just going to create a little circle, a little bigger than that hole I created before, and then just make sure that it gets centered. You can either select it here, but sometimes the bigger object gets selected, so you have to kind of play around like with any graphics program. Now I'm going to put that black right on top, so now we have an eye. Easy enough. Let's see. Now, like with most graphics programs, if you just click and drag, oops, wrong one. I've got to use my undo over there because I just moved the wrong thing. Select the eye white. I'm going to use the menu over here. Select these two objects. That whole thing, I'm going to copy over here on the left side. You've got these like two pages, two pieces of paper over here. I'm going to click that, copy, and then paste. Now I got two eyes. And just to make sure they are where I want them, let's see, right about 
there. This is my center line here. So I just want to make sure that I get both of these. Nope, oh, wrong one. I want to make sure that they're even and symmetrical. Well, that's pretty good right there. All right, let's add lips. You could do a nose, you could do a mustache, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do some lips. So I'm going to come down here again. I want a fill stitch. And this time I don't want a circle because um, that's not the shape of lips that I want. Let's do free draw and the density is fine. Now this is still a fill stitch. And let's do something like this. Like this. It looks more like a mustache than lips. I don't know what that is, especially when it's turned black. <laughs> let's make it a different color. That would help. No, that doesn't look like lips. So let's undo and try a different shape of lip. Let's try it again. And you can always use that undo over here on the left side and just start over. Undo and redo are very easy. Okay, let's freehand draw this again. And we'll do maybe a simpler little mouth here. Eee, just a little smile. Woo, like that. Ta-da. All right. And if you want to, you can select that. Just click the arrow down here to select it. And then you can go to the node. And you see how I got this little, uh, like, little kind of divot thing going on that I don't want to have there. Okay. And when you're doing this, what you want to, over here, you've got this menu that pops up. And select if you want to move. And then you can just move things around. Okay, so that got rid of that funky corner thing I had going on. And yes, we want it smooth. That's good. All right. I think that looks better. I'm not so sure, though. I've still got something funky. Yeah. Okay. Back out. Zoom out a little bit. And their hand tool down at the bottom, you can just kind of reposition and get it where you want it. So that is two eyes and a mouth. And one thing that I did not do yet is on each of these fills, we need to make sure we have our underlay set up. The density of four is good. Um, fill patterns, you only have a few different patterns here. I can do a satin stitch on the mouth and it's not gonna work that way because, let's fix this, this is easy to fix. Down here at the bottom, you have this um, icon that says inclination edit and it's not popping up on the screen. It's actually popping up down below, so you can't see it. But this one here is changing the angle of the stitches, and you've got these two dots that show up. And I'm gonna move them so that they're up and down instead of side to side, and now I'm gonna get a satin stitch like that. Okay. Also, I wanna make sure that I have underlay stitches turned on for that mouth so that it will um, embroider nicely. And I want to do the same thing for these eye whites. Perpendicular and contour is what I'm going to choose just because of the shape that I'm using. And I think I also want to change the fill pattern to smooth on both of these eyes. Pattern smooth. Okay, so that's going to give me a little um, circle with a seam. It's going to give me two eyes and these lips. It's pretty much all there is to it. So I'm gonna put this over on my machine. One more thing we have to do before we can stitch this is we need to change the order of the stitches and the way that it stitches out. So the order is going to be, first we're going to do our placement stitch and then we're gonna put the fabric down. We're going to do a tack down stitch along with um, the eye whites. So I'm going to move the seam to the very end. See if I can get it down there. That's this circle right here. It needs to go all the way. That's the last thing we want to do is this last circle seam. Okay, that's at the end. And we can also make this tack down stitch be the same color thread as the eye whites. That's going to be fine. You could make them different colors, but you don't have to. So I'm going to change this one over here and make that white. So I've got, and again, we need both of the eye whites together. 
So we're going to have our circle for the tack down, and then it's going to do one of the eye whites and the other. And then we want to do the black pupils. Then it's going to do the red lips. And then finally we'll put the back fabric on, maybe put a little tab loop at the top, and then stitch the seam. So that's the order for an in the hoop project that you would want to follow. Now I'm ready to save this file and you can go up here and save it. I'm going to save it on my desktop and transfer it to my machine and I'll show you how it stitches out and assembles. So that's all there was to it, to stitch out this little guy, and you saw how quick it was to digitize it using the Design Doodler software. Stitching it out didn't take very long. Turning it and stuffing it and glue in the back on the back side was very easy too. So very easy, simple little project just to play around with the Design Doodler software. See if you like it. Uh, make a whole bunch of plushies for whoever you want. I think it's a fun little thing to play around with. If you have more questions about how it works or any comments, that's what the YouTube comment box is for. I would love to hear from you. That's all I got for now. Bye folks. Mm -hmm.